Ahead on Black News Tonight, former Minnesota officer Kim Potter has been found guilty of manslaughter in the death of 20-year-old Dante Wright. We'll take a look at what the verdict means for policing and restorative justice in the U.S. Then, Habari Ghani, happy Kwanzaa. As we're getting ready to celebrate the Black American holiday, the New York Times best-selling author E.B. Zaboy will join me to discuss her debut picture book celebrating Kwanzaa's seven principles and highlighting the importance of communal memory. And, you know, I see people who need help. And I know what it feels like to get that emergency love. These days, you can't even voice your opinion without feeling like society, society's gonna come eat you up. But you have to also remember that there was a point in time when it was difficult to imagine a world without slavery. We'll take a quick ride down memory lane and revisit three interviews I had with black entertainers and creative powerhouses. From Anthony Hamilton to Vic Mensa to the hilarious Amara La Negra. Black News Tonight starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining me on Black News Tonight. I'm Mark Lamont Hill. An update on the trial of Kim Potter, the former Minnesota police officer found guilty of two counts of manslaughter in the death of Dante Wright. The jury finds Potter guilty of first degree and second degree manslaughter. Potter claimed she'd mistaken her gun for her taser when she shot Wright during a traffic stop in April. During the stop, officers found Wright had an outstanding warrant. When the 20-year-old tried to pull away, Potter shot him. Prosecutors argued Potter acted recklessly and should be found guilty. Defense attorneys said it was a terrible accident, but not a crime. Keith Ellison, Minnesota's attorney general, spoke shortly after the verdict. We have a degree of accountability for Dante's death. Accountability is not justice. Justice is restoration. Justice would be restoring Dante to life and making the right family whole again. Justice is beyond the reach that we have in this life for Dante. But accountability is an important step, a critical, necessary step on the road to justice for us all. Potter is expected to be sentenced on February 18th. Joining me now to discuss is BNT's chief legal correspondent, Laura McNeil. Welcome back to BNT. Good to see you as always, Dr. Laura. What was your reaction when you heard the guilty verdict? Mark, I was completely shocked. I thought she was going to get away with it. I didn't think this jury, this all-white jury, with the exception of one black juror, was going to find her guilty. So I'm shocked but happy. Happy because we've been fighting for so long, especially in communities of color, to hold police officers accountable for their actions. Today, the court system, the legal system, actually worked and held Kim Potter responsible. The jury struggled to get these guilty verdicts. Deliberations lasted for four days. And at one point, the jury pondered what could happen if they couldn't reach a verdict. Uh, I'll be honest, that's where I started to get some doubt. I said, well, if they're asking what to do if they can't reach a verdict, then they probably aren't going to be able to reach a verdict. What do you think pushed them toward guilty? Yes, and so we found out a little bit more information. They actually had already, to my understanding, reached a guilty verdict on the second count, meaning second-degree manslaughter, not first-degree manslaughter. So um, there, we didn't know that because obviously we weren't behind the scenes. But what's important is what I think really pushed them over is Kim Potter's own words. I think when she got on that witness stand, she completely killed any chance of an acquittal. And especially when you consider she admitted to targeting Dante Wright as part of a training exercise. Remember, based on an air freshener. And I think that really resonated with the jurors, as well as the fact that she's a field training officer and she didn't follow her own training. It's very clear. The Brooklyn Center Police Department says if you fire your taser, it should not be towards any major organs, not in the chest area. She fired what she thought was a taser, based on her testimony, right into the center of Dante Wright's chest. That was reckless. The jury saw that. She, her own training told her that, and they held her accountable. Potter took the stand in her own defense, as you said. Uh, in addition to her testimony, there was also the tears. Many people criticized those tears. Did they hurt? Did they help? What'd you think? What tears? Did you see tears fall down, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw crying. <laughs> 
a lot of people said they didn't see any tears actually coming down her face. But, you know, I don't think it helped her. I don't think she did what she needed to do, obviously, which was to make an emotional connection with the jurors so that they said, you know what, this was an innocent mistake by someone who's been on the force for 20 plus years, never fired her firearm. It wasn't believable because on cross-examination, we went from the sweet tearful, emotional Kim Potter to a very aggressive and resistant, a difficult witness, a hostile witness. And so I know the jurors were thinking what I was thinking, which is, which is the real Kim Potter? So I think she really hurt herself by getting on that stand. The National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives released a statement on the Potter verdict saying this case sheds light on the need for reforms as they relate to police academy training. Do you think training is actually a solution to this? No, it's more than training because we saw a field training officer ignoring her own training, which was Kim Potter. Um, we've seen Derek Chauvin ignoring his own training with respect to George Floyd, not putting him um, in the prone position, uh, meaning he was supposed to take him out of that position to make sure he could breathe. And so this is more than training. This is about having police officers that should not be on the police force, police officers with biases, racial biases and religious biases that should not be on the force. So we have to do a better job screening police officers who are being recruited. Those are on the force. And more important, we need to make sure that other officers are part of their own reform because we can't have eyes and ears everywhere. We need these officers when they see their fellow officers are not following procedures are engaging in police brutality. They need to speak up because their commitment should not be to the blue code. It needs to be to the public and the communities that they serve. Kim Potter's trial coming just months after former officer Derek Chauvin was convicted of killing George Floyd. Uh, what message do you think this sends to the black community who, for very good reason, don't trust this criminal legal system, don't have faith in it? Uh, does, does this give them any hope? Does it give them false hope? Does it give them righteous hope? What does it do? You know, it's going to take more for our community to have true, authentic hope and to be able to actually excel. Because, yes, we got a win for the killing of Ahmaud Arbery. We got accountability uh, for the killing of George Floyd and now Dante Wright. But there's hundreds and hundreds, I say thousands, of other black men we didn't get accountability for, like Daniel Prude in New York, Eric Gardner in New York. And so it's going to take a lot more for our communities, for black America to feel like once and for all, we are being treated fair, equitably, and that police officers are being held accountable when the harm is in our communities. So a step in the right direction, Mark, but we have a long way to go. Always. Dr. Laura, thank you so much for your continued expertise throughout this trial. I sincerely don't know what we would do without you. Uh, everybody, be sure to join the conversation. We want to hear from you. Head over to our BNC Instagram and Twitter pages. Let us know how you feel. Also, visit our website, bnc.tv, and subscribe to our YouTube page to check out clips from the show. When we come back, we'll talk about Kwanzaa. I have the New York Times bestselling author, E.B. Zaboy, on deck, and she has a new picture book on the blackest holidays of all. Stay right here. <laughs> 